you're running down the line with the ball with you. There's an open field in front of you and then bam, you got hit from the side. You felt a pop in your knee, but the adrenaline was rushing through your body so you felt like you could stand up. But no, there's little stability in your knee. You ruptured your anterior cruciate ligament or also the ACL. At around 68 people in 100,000 people rupture their ACL annually. But what is the ACL? And what happens when you rupture your ACL? Do you need surgery or is a conservative approach also doable? Today, I'll try to answer these questions about the ACL. Hi, and welcome to YourPhysio.online. Before we talk about the duration and different type of ACL recoveries, we need to understand what the ACL is. The ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament. And this ligament is a big stabilizer for the knee. Without the ACL, your knee can feel unstable. So if you tear it, your knee will probably become unstable. But should you get surgery immediately or should you try a more conservative approach first? Well, this question is hard to answer because it depends on several factors. The first factor is the presence of other injuries in the knee. In about 50% of the cases of an ACL tear, other tissues like a meniscus or cartilage or other ligaments get injured. And if there's more damage in the knee, surgery can be helpful. The second factor is your bone age. When you're still growing, you may have open growth plates. If your growth plates are still open, surgery isn't going to be the right choice for you. The third factor is your activity level. If you do low activity manual work and you don't do a pivoting sport, you probably don't need surgery and the more conservative approach can be enough. But if you do heavy manual work or pivoting sports like soccer or basketball, a surgery is recommended because of the higher forces on the knees. And the fourth factor is the level of instability. If your knee keeps unstable, chances are high that you are also damaged a meniscus or other parts in your knees. So if your knee keeps unstable during the day, surgery could be the best choice. So now you know whether you should or shouldn't have surgery. But should you even consider getting back to your contact or pivoting sport? If we take a look at healthy knees, the chance of developing osteoarthritis is lower than in ACL injuries knees, 18% to 57%. So the chance of developing osteoarthritis is higher after an ACL tear. But what does that have to do with returning to sports? Well, research shows that people who return to contact and pivoting sport activities have a much higher chance of re-injuring their ACL. So the chance is higher that you re-injure your ACL when you return to contact and pivoting sports. But the chance of developing osteoarthritis is also higher than in people who don't return to sport activities. So maybe it isn't really smart to return to contact and sport activities. There are good stories and bad stories. And most important is that you make a good trade-off between the pros and the cons. Just like making a trade-off between the type of graft you should choose. If you rupture your ACL and you're having surgery, you need to have a new ACL. We call a new ACL a graft. Let's only talk about the two different graft types today because there are plenty more. The hamstring graft, which you take out of the medial part of the hamstring, and the patellar tendon graft, which you take out of the front of your knee. Let's take a look at the differences in laxity of the knee. Strength in the knee, pain in the knee, return to sports, and the duration of the total recovery between the hamstring and the patella graft. If we take a look at the laxity, five big studies have not found a difference in laxity between these two grafts. Looking at the strength of the quadriceps muscles and hamstring muscles between these two grafts, there is no difference in short and long-term follow-up in quadriceps strength. But there are some mixed results for short-term strength of the hamstring muscles but no difference in hamstring strength between the two grafts on long term. Taking a look at the differences in knee pain, the patellar tendon graft shows to give us more anterior knee pain than the hamstring graft, especially during kneeling and squatting. Another point was the return to sport. The type of graft didn't change the ability to return to sport, nor the chance of re-rupturing the ACL. The last point we will look at is the total duration of the recovery. And with total duration, I mean the phase 
where the graft is turned into a new ACL. Study shows that the patella tendon needs approximately 6 to 12 months to turn into a new ACL, where the hamstring graft needs 12 to 24 months. So the hamstring graft needs a longer time to turn into a new ACL. Yet, studies also show that, that there is no real difference between the re-rupture rate between these two types of grafts. Whoa, that was a lot of information, but we at Your Feature Online believe that you need all the information to make a good decision on what to do after you rupture your ACL. I hope this video helped you in making a good trade-off between having surgery or not, returning back to sports, and what type of craft you should use. Thanks for watching and make sure to send this video to family and friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informational videos. And if you need a personal consultation, you can find us at yourfeature.online. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.